AI in Action is brought to you by Aulus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Our host brings you the leading minds in AI, sharing their story, their success, and their advice. Focusing on fast-tracking you to the top, AI in Action cuts through the hype to help you kickstart your data science career. To listen to the latest AI in Action podcast, head over to www.aldus.com forward slash podcast, or subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts. Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the Aldus podcast. I'm your host Ben Sparks and today we are continuing with our ServiceNow series, speaking with some of the best and brightest leaders from across the ServiceNow ecosystem. Today we are very lucky to host uh, Subu Palianapan. Uh, Subu currently holds the position of ServiceNow platform owner at uh, Hitachi Ventara. Um, in this conversation, uh, Subu will be discussing a range of topics, um, however, mostly including uh, some advice for moving from the consulting to the end customer environment and vice versa. Uh, a look into uh, Hitachi uh, Ventara's ServiceNow platform at a high level. His advice and top tips for C-suite and executives embarking on ServiceNow and digital transformation journeys and some key learns throughout his career. Um, for those that are embarking on a similar journey. So, Subu, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ben. Happy to be here. So, obviously, people recognize your company name, but let's start giving our listeners a, an overview of yourself. So, um, basically, just let them know who they're, talk, who they're listening to, really. So, um, who um, who are you and uh, can you give us an overview of your career to date? Sure. Um, I've been in the tech industry for about 18 years and 11 of those years I worked with ServiceNow and I've primarily been like an application management leader. I've done a variety of, managed a variety of different applications, starting from ERP uh, to quite a few BI applications and um, quite a few service management and automation type applications. And of course, the biggest one of that is uh, ServiceNow. Now, throughout my career, I've done a variety of different roles, uh, been a consultant, worked as a consultant for many years, obviously, working with clients and helping them, you know, get to their goals. And uh, I've been an employee, worked as a process owner. That's when I first got involved with ServiceNow. Um, and then along the way, I've taken other roles like project manager, obviously team manager, application manager, and then uh, right now a platform owner. In my, through, in my career, I've always believed that technology can not just enable businesses, but also transform businesses. And that's why I'm a big fan of ServiceNow, just with the way ServiceNow has gone about doing their things. Uh, and of course, if you notice in 2018, they were named as the most innovative company um, in Forbes. So just ServiceNow just had so much value to uh, customers and their businesses. So yeah, that's my career. Awesome. And, um, uh, you know, you've obviously held various roles. Um, how did you get introduced to ServiceNow? How did that sort of come about? Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> so back in uh, 2009, I started working for this company called ProBuild. Uh -huh. And um, we were, you know, I was kind of, I was their process owner, actually. I was managing the release process and their software configuration process. And we were just using, you know, one of those uh, uh, one of those open source ticketing systems, um, it was fine, uh, but obviously we were looking for a new uh, service management system and uh, service now back in 2009, we're just what, three or four years into them, uh, into uh, being rolled out and they were a pretty new company, but you know, we went with them, uh, we gave them a shot and um, yeah, got involved in service now back then, helped kind of set up those processes in uh, ServiceNow, uh, which then led me to be more involved in ServiceNow. It kind of became like a power user kind of role in ServiceNow. From there, you know, it's the journey just began. That's how it started. Nice. Everyone seems to have a different story with ServiceNow, so it's great to uh, great to hear how you got involved. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, usually starts with uh, hearing about seeing the product and falling in love with it, which sounds like you did. Um, so, you know, if we look, you mentioned uh, before, you know, you've worked across a number of different styles mm -hmm. of employers over the years, right? Consulting and and in customer. You know, we see a lot of people making similar moves. Um, so, you know, from end customer to consulting and vice versa. Um, you know, could you kind of give us a walkthrough of your experience when it comes to those different sort of constructions, for want of a better phrase? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And having done both the roles, 
um, I think I can have some kind of an idea or you know observations. But before I share that, I do want to say that it really depends on the individual. Like, you know, I've met so many consultants that I've never realized they were consultants until one day they just say like, oh yeah, this is my last day because my contract ends. I'm like, wait, what, you're a consultant? <laughs> um, so, and, and I've seen the other other side as well, but it really depends on the individual and how they go about their, their business. But some of my observations, you know, as you can imagine, a consultant usually comes in for a short term, he's working on one specific project, it's, he's budgeted for that specific project. And, uh, you know, he usually comes in with some expertise. And with that expertise, the expectation is that he's going to add value quickly, pretty much get going on day one, right? Um, and then also the expectation is that he or she is going to meet the customer's demands. Now, I'm conflicted about that statement. Um, it's one thing to give the customer what they need, versus what they want. And we'll get into that a little bit deeper in just a second. Of course. But uh, from an employee perspective, as you can imagine, you know, an employee is a long-term employee, um, doesn't necessarily have to have this you know, special skill set, but as long as there's potential, you know, he or she can get hired and there's flexibility to learn and grow with the organization. And typically employees, yes, they will get their projects done, but their focus is also on the longer term sustainability of their uh, platform. Awesome. No, I completely agree. And um, so, you know, when what, you know, you've obviously, again, as I mentioned, worked through these constructions. Um, what would your advice to people for considering different sort of employment styles? And I suppose I'm thinking whether that's a, a contractor, a permanent person, mm -hmm. a permanent person at a consultancy. <laughs> you know, the world is uh, quite grey when it comes to all the, how these constructions could all come together. But, you know, if you, is there any themes that you've kind of picked up as a, uh, as advice you'd give to people? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I can think of two big areas. Uh, the first one, I would say your skill set, right? Depending on what you want to do, whether you want to be an employee, which obviously it allows you some flexibility to be able to, you know, acquire new skill sets while you're at the job versus a consultant or a contractor would have to probably be prepared to go in with that skill set. So one is skill set. Keep that skill set in mind. Your technical capabilities, obviously be prepared for whatever uh, you want to step into, right? So, um, especially with SOS now, there are so many, you know, resources these days, uh, starting from YouTube channels to now learning to official training. Uh, so yeah, absolutely focus on your skill set number one. The second and most important to me, irrespective of the platform or the technology, is the mindset. And and again, you know, individuals are different. So, but in general, I have a couple of suggestions. Uh, number one is for consultants. Yes, I kind of talked about how, you know, a customer wants something great, but then do they really need it, right? So, um, so it's one thing to talk about customer satisfaction, customer excitement, but instead of simply pleasing a customer, I would rather focus on setting them up for success in the longer run. And I'll, I'll share experience. A few years ago, we had some consultants come in they did some amazing work. They worked with our stakeholders to, you know, to kind of gather requirements and they did some amazing work, uh, some really good UIs and user experiences. All of that was great. But unfortunately, two, three years later, my team is still carrying a bunch of technical debt and our upgrades, especially in service now, still takes anywhere from six to eight to 10 weeks and that is not acceptable. And now that I go back and look at all of those amazing work that they did, we really didn't need half of them. So I would like a consultant to come in and tell me, hey, I know you want a Ferrari, but you don't need a Ferrari. You're good with a Honda, especially when I'm just learning how to love to drive, right? So uh, definitely would encourage consultant to kind of like change that mindset Think about the, concert, the, the customer's long-term success. Yes, you'd probably be missing out on some revenue at the, in the short term, but then that long-term relationship is very important. When it comes to employees, however, I think employees these days have to put on that consultant ad and think about the company and think about adding value quickly. There's no time these days to wait for six months, nine months, 12 months to deliver something. 
things are changing so fast these days, we just cannot wait for it. Employees need to really deliver fast, show value. And how do you do that? Especially with sales now, stick to out of the box, <laughs> simply out of the box. Take that out of the box, plug in, activate it, and you can get something up and running in no time. Like be agile. Do we have to be perfect at the very first go run? Probably not, right? And that's the agile mindset. Really, at least as long as your user adoption is not suffering, I think employees need to focus on getting that MVP, that minimum viable product out as soon as possible. So just by making a few changes in your mindset on how you work, I think it's going to be so much easier for someone who's an employee to switch to, to a consultancy or someone on the other end to become an employee. Awesome. No, some great advice there. So, um, you know, let's talk, can you talk our three listeners through your current role and responsibilities? We touched on your title before, but let's take a bit of a deeper, deeper sure. dive into that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my current title is Senior Manager of Corporate Applications. I fall within the IT arc, um, working for my VP, who is the Corporate Applications Leader. And um, in my current role, I manage a few different applications. And of course, Service Now is one big one. And uh, with that, I'm a global Service Now leader. I'm responsible for architecture, engineering, support, anything and everything that you can think of in the platform kind of falls under me. Of course, I collaborate with some of my uh, counterparts from the process side, be it ITSM teams or HR teams or facilities teams. So we obviously have to collaborate and work with them. But Primarily, my team is responsible for the platform and everything within the platform. Um, in addition to that, I always like to get involved in other uh, fun activities, I would say. Um, I've, always, I've, I've been a leader of the Global IT Engagement Committee for a while. And just recently, I'm also part of this IT innovation um, team. And we are organizing a Global IT Hackathon. So, you know, if we kind of want a better phrase, pull back the curtain on a few of your other employers and, you know, can you give us an overview of the types of, of, of service now instances and platforms that have been in, in, in those organizations? Sure. Yeah. Um, I said I started with Provo, right, back in 2009. Um, obviously, at that time, uh, the main modules were the core modules, like ITS and core modules. Think about incident. Uh, change and release. I don't think we installed, we did a problem at the time. Just those three modules, of course, knowledge management and request management and all of the good stuff. But um, we did that implementation initially. And uh, sure enough, uh, after two or three years, as the product evolved and as our process, our process maturity involved, we had to do a re implementation. So we did that. And then along the way, I also worked with the finance organization to set them up in service now. So I kind of had that experience as well. I was running that project back then. Um, <laughs> interestingly enough, I also had to go through the experience of sunsetting service now, which, okay. uh, which almost never happens with any <laughs> customer apparently. So when I was working with service now directly with their support team and asking them like, hey, I need to sunset this application. How can I get all the data? They were like, um, the people don't usually do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I did go through that experience. It was very interesting. Uh, but, you know, fast forward a year, I'm at Itachi. Oh dear, Itachi is, we just use pretty much everything we have in service now. Um, so obviously ITSM, all the core modules in ITSM. We also have uh, ITOM, IT Operations Management. We are still kind of like halfway through the initial implementation. So we still have some work to do there. HR service delivery was huge for us. Um, in fact, we started our journey with service now through HR service salary. So initially they were using mailboxes and SharePoint. So they wanted something and they started with service now and then IT followed them. Uh, so HR service salary is huge for us. And then we did onboarding, global onboarding, which was a big project for us. Um, over the last two, three years, my team has spent a lot of time on uh, getting onboarding up and running. So right now, uh, Itachi is a global company. Itachi Ventura is a global company. We have you know, we have hiring happening in pretty much, you know, 80 some countries or something like that. So almost all of them 
go through service now is onboarding. So yeah, we're pretty proud about that specific implementation. We also yeah. have facilities pieces. Um, it's it's not a big implementation, but there's also that. But yeah, we are constantly looking at ways to grow within the platform, and um, um, we have a lot of um, you know fun working on the platform for sure. Sounds it, and it, uh, it's fair to say you've had your hands in um, pretty much all of the platform by the sounds yeah. of it. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, before we we sort of jumped on this podcast, we spoke a lot about, you know, one of the things we're trying to do here is kind of give a, uh, some advice to the marketplace, right? And obviously, you're, you've got a lot of experience with a lot of different areas there. Um, you know, what advice would you give to or like to share, for want of a better phrase, with um, uh, with executives who are either, let's say, embarking on a new implementation or a greenfield site, or even you know maybe some enhancements. As you've uh, you've obviously got the experience in all of those. Sure. Um, you know, I I would talk. I have like five different points that I can talk about here. Uh, the first and most important thing is build an internal team. Now, yes, you know, partners can help you accelerate your implementation, which is great but I would absolutely focus on building an internal team and not after the implementation, but before the implementation. You always want your internal team to partner with your partners and vendors so they can work together in that implementation. That's so critical. You never want to get to a point where, you know, you bring in someone and you ask them to blindly support that implementation. That just puts them in a very difficult spot. That's, uh, and you know, as you build this internal team, you got to be reasonable with hiring. I mean. Service now is is so broad and so deep. It's going to be difficult for someone to say like, oh, I need a service now expert. There's no such thing, actually. <laughs> you could ask for an ITOM expert. You could ask for an ITSM expert and uh, HR expert, but not all in one, right? So I would say, you know, most most candidates are ITSM specialists. And it's okay to hire them. They can learn the other modules. There are so many tools out there, so many resources out there they can learn the other modules. So, you know, in, in line with that, I would say build an internal team and dedicate time for that learning. My second point is, especially for CIOs, I would say make sales now a critical part of your enterprise application strategy. What I mean by that is it's got to be right in the middle. Your enterprise architects, your application owners, your, you know, infrastructure leaders, everyone should be able to understand the power of those now and its capabilities. Because as these folks work on their projects, work on you know, improving your environment, service now has to be right and center because it offers so much. So I would absolutely make it part of your critical, make it part of your application strategy. Uh, my third point would be to stay out of the box, right? And you know, you've heard this multiple times from many different people. There's really truth to that. The moment you start, you know, customizing, it's going to be much difficult to manage, maintain, and upgrade in the longer run. So stay out of the box. With that, you can deliver fast and often. The fourth point is not just relevant to just sales now. Change management, right? Any change management takes time. Now, I have a funny story. Just recently. Over the holidays, I set up some of these smart plugs in my house um, and I connected my lamps, all my lamps to these smart plugs. And sure enough, my wife kept turning off the lamp directly uh, <laughs> instead of asking Alexa, instead of asking the smart speaker to um, do the work for us. And I was like, why are you doing this? You know, this is a smart plug. You ask the smart speaker to turn off and turn on. And she tells me, I've been doing this for 35 years, like turning on and off the lamp. <laughs> You're asking me to change that behavior overnight. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny and very relevant here, right? I mean, as we, you know, leverage some of these AI capabilities within service now or elsewhere, you know, things are changing so dramatically, but then that change management is very important. So I would say from a change management perspective, at least with service now, what we did was with our first onboarding, we had some trouble, we had some challenges there. So for the second phase of onboarding, we did so many demos. We had demos pretty much every week. Our HR product manager and the project manager worked with our stakeholders pretty much every single week, showing them the product as it evolved, as we were building it. So because they saw it so many times, then they finally, when it came for being to go live, they're like, oh yeah, I've seen this product multiple times. I can use it, right? So that is very important. Creating that constant feedback loop 
is very important. And of course, once you're live, tracking user adoption is going to be important as well. My last point is in line with the change management is identifying some service now champions like a service now champion program. What that simply means is you identify folks outside of your core service now team. Hopefully these folks value service now. You train them, you kind of like, you know, get them involved in some of your critical projects and critical meetings. Get them, um, you know, trained enough that they can then train others, like train the trainer concept, right? But more along the lines of socializing the value of service now, socializing the capabilities of service now. So yeah, that's what I would say, you know, really focus on um, helping, not just buying the platform, but also helping your teams use the platform better. That's, there's some fantastic points there, and I, I must admit, um, being uh, being someone that as well struggles with change myself um, <laughs> in some environments, I can definitely relate to a lot of that, and I love the, the sort of early introduction piece. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, cool. So, you know, what's next? You know, what's next for Hitachi and, and, and why? why? When it relates to ServiceNow, obviously. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, you know, luckily for me, my CIO, Tim, and my uh, VP, Ison, both have been very supportive of ServiceNow. And, uh, you know, thinking about ServiceNow as a, you know, looking ahead, a, you know, strategy, strategic application, which is really nice because that's exactly what service now does. It really pushes you forward, right? So it's good for me to have that support. Having had that support, now uh, we are looking at, I would say, three different categories. Number one would be is elevating the employee experience. Now, obviously, we we have our service portals and uh, making it easier for people to submit tickets and uh, reach out to reach out for help. But what we're thinking about now is like, you know, have one single portal. We're we looking at the employee service center, which actually offers quite a few features. So that's one thing you're looking at. Um, combine that with mobile apps, right? So being able to do anything, ask for help from your mobile app is going to be important for us. And then the third uh, piece that I'm thinking in that category is consolidation of approvals and tasks. I'm not only talking about tasks within ServiceNow, but also external uh, to service now. So what I mean by that is, let's just say I'm a manager and I log into service now. I'd like to see my approvals and tasks within service now. Let's just say someone submitted, they wanted some laptop or something. So that could be an approval waiting in my queue. But in addition to that, I'd like to see what approvals I have in Workday. I'd like to see what approvals or extension requests I have in Beeline. So really bringing it all together in service now in sing one single view is going to be really helpful. Now add a mobile app on top of that and if they can just approve by just swiping from their mobile phone, that would be amazing. Um, so that's the first category. The second category is modernizing and optimizing IT. Now, of course, there are so many things that we can do uh, within IT, but um, one thing that we're looking at is um, AWS Connect and doing automated voice responses. Unfortunately, 50% of our tickets still come through phone calls. So we are trying to find a way to, you know, automatically resolve the customer's calls. So luckily we have AWS Connect, which can then integrate with ServiceNow, and then we can then kick off these automations based on a workflow um, and try to attack some of those, uh, try to deflect some of those tickets. That's one thing. And then, of course, we have uh, numerous automation opportunities within uh, ServiceNow. We have Integration Hub, which extends these automations beyond ServiceNow. That's one thing we are looking to do. And all the amazing AI and machine learning capabilities that are available with ServiceNow. The third and more expansive category is the enterprise service management. Obviously, we are using ITSM. We're using HR and there's also a facilities management piece, but really what we're looking to do now is extend all of these capabilities to other business units. So we just had a call with our legal department yesterday. Uh, eventually we'll go to finance, marketing, sales, you know, bring every everyone into sales now. So from an employee perspective, all they need to do is go to this one single portal and get help. So that's kind of what we are looking to do. It's pretty exciting, I would say. It's pretty exciting for Itachi, uh, at least for the next many months. 
you're going to be busy it sounds very <laughs> exciting indeed you and your team are going to be so busy and that's that's awesome and and i really appreciate the overview and and you've given us some some awesome um sort of nuggets of information here um so is there anything you'd like to close with you know i think we're pretty much done on my questions but anything you'd like to add um uh, so is now I, I would just say to for all your listeners those now you know, there's definitely value in service now, not just any value, a lot of value in service now. Yes, it might be overwhelming to take it on, but you know, the moment you have the platform set up and running, you can do so many amazing things in service now. And really, uh, you know, having a dedicated team to push you forward is also going to be important. So those are just some of my um, just just general thoughts on service now and uh, the opportunities within service now um i would ask people to go check out our itachi ventara uh, careers page we have a lot of opportunities we are actually hiring a lot of people in hyderabad india and we have a location in krakow poland as well and we're mm-hmm. also looking for some folks in mexico city so anyone who's who's, who's listening to this podcast you know definitely go check out our careers page i myself have a cmdb engineer role in Krakow right now. Um, I am looking to open more positions uh, in the in the next coming months. But yeah, take a look at Itachi Ventura. We're doing uh, a lot of great things. Awesome, awesome. You've given us some great stuff to think about. Thank you so much for your time and um, we'll, we'll look forward to uh, speaking again soon. Thanks so much, Ben. AI Action is brought to you by Aldus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Aldus offer an exec search program. Aldus can help you discover how data science and AI can transform your company. With our unrivaled network of C-suite executives and senior AI professionals, we offer retained search services across the US and Europe. Get the Aldus advantage. Become a member of the Aldus community and enjoy some of the following. AI meetups. Once a month, our community gathers to listen to some of the leading experts in the world of data science and AI. Our speakers come from all over the world, including Dublin, Boston, and Frankfurt. We also have our AI mentors. Our experts will provide mentoring to all its members. And don't forget our AI in Action podcast. Each week, we have guests from all over the world talking us through their education, career, and more. Become an Aldus member and get the Aldus advantage. For more information and to sign up for our newsletter, log on to www.aldus.com. That's www.aldus.com. Aldus International, empowering through AI.